morning, everybody, and a happy Wednesday morning to you, you guys. We are covering, in this uh, video, we're covering William and what he's doing. We're covering Megan's hair. We're covering Invictus clothing. We're covering, so, oh my God, there's so much to cover. But because the video is so long, once again, it's being split into two. For those of you who've said you don't like it, I apologize. Not a whole lot I can do about that. But there's so much to cover. Uh, pay a close attention. There's some interesting stuff in here. Let's go. So we're going to start off by talking about fraud. Uh, this screenshot was right off my account. Somebody has made an account with my name and they're putting out a WhatsApp phone number telling you to call it. Obviously, I wouldn't put my phone number out. And as you can see, it says Sue Dash Smith. That is not me. I would never do something like that. So when you see this kind of stuff, you guys, just ignore it. And you can also tell it's fake because when you click on it, it takes you to this screen and you see this person has two subscribers. Okay, so we all know how important safety online is. And with that, I have a sponsor message. Listen up. You know, I've already spoken to you about several benefits with Aura. One had to do with financial fraud. One had to do with identity theft and wiping your information off the web. Let's talk now about a third benefit of using Aura. Did you guys know that children aged 11 to 14 spend nine hours a day online? Well, Aura has a family plan that can accommodate five adults and an unlimited number of children. What Aura does is it filters harmful sites and manages how much time your children can spend on apps like YouTube, Roadblox, Snapchat, and more. It's powered by Circle, which is an award-winning technology used by thousands of parents. And for your children that are doing online gaming, the cyberbullying protection is really super important. Keep your kids safe with 24-7 in-game voice and text monitoring of over 200 of the most popular PC games. Get alerted to cyberbullying, online predators, and toxic gaming behavior. Now you can keep track of your children's devices, all of them, and you'll get a really good picture of what exactly they're doing on those devices. You can establish screen time boundaries and you can even pause the internet. You can block apps and you can customize filters for certain websites. With that information, you choose how long your child stays online. That's right, you can cut the internet off. Just go to the description box and click on the link in order to get a two week free trial. You don't want to compromise your child's online safety, so it's super important. Check out Aura today. All right, you guys. So now we have a lot of information to cover in this video, as I said again. So let's just jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. We are going to start today talking about Prince William. Of course, they had the BAFTAs and we know Catherine loves to go, but this year, because she's still recovering from her abdominal surgery that she had at the end of January, he had to go by himself. So he walked the red carpet at the Royal Festival Hall in London. He was wearing his navy blue velvet tux. We know we love the blue velvet. He looked absolutely wonderful. For those of you who may not be aware, William has been the BAFTA president since February of 2010. And Prince Philip, Grandpa was the very first president of BAFTA, and he did that from 1959 to 1965. As is typical of William, he stopped on the red carpet just to meet members of the public. He was shaking hands. He was taking selfies. He's very personable. We already know this, but, you know, love to see it in photos anyway. These awards are, and I'm quoting, an annual celebration of the extraordinary skill, talent, and craft of the film industry. It is BAFTA, B-A-F-T-A, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts since 2010. This has been going on. And he is walking like a future king. I absolutely love it. Now, they do say that... Uh, Prince William will watch the awards ceremony before meeting the category winners and the rising star winners. So he doesn't know ahead of time who's going to win, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. One of the first people he spoke to was Anna Higgs, who is the chairwoman of the BAFTA Film Committee. 
She later on revealed in an interview how the screeners for the award films are sent to Prince William. William met other officials from BAFTA as well before it was time to move on because the red carpet was starting and here come the stars. All I want to say about all of these women is I love the different styles and none of these women wore things that were What's the word I'm thinking of? I don't want to say trashy, but you know, sometimes at some of these awards ceremonies, we see these women wearing these outfits. They might as well be naked. You know, it leaves nothing to the imagination. So I was really pleased to see a lot of the outfits that these women wore because they looked gorgeous. They looked classy. It showed their figures. They were well tailored. I just thought that everybody looked lovely. So after walking the red carpet, everybody moved on inside, and this is where the real magic happened. So the first thing we saw was William shaking hands with David Beckham. Now, it appears that the Wales family, William and Catherine, got the Beckhams in the quote-unquote divorce uh, of the families. No problem there. David also was giving out an award at the award ceremony that night. It seems pretty obvious to me that they have a warm, personal, friendly relationship. Also seen was Kate Blanchett. Now, she came walking onto the red carpet first. I love the dress. And again, they seem to have a warm, personal friendship. And Miss Blanchett was also giving out an award that evening. Oh, I love that color on her. Love the necklace. It appears from all the pictures that we've seen uh, of the decorations on the tables and of everything going on that this was a top glamorous event, which it usually is every year. The only thing missing was Catherine. It's kind of sad, but I was happy to see everybody having a really, really, really good time. Now, usually Catherine and William watch all of the nominees before they get to the BAFTA Awards. Believe it or not, all the films that are nominated go to William and Catherine and they watch them all. But William flat out admitted, look, with everything going on, I wasn't able to watch them all, but says he is going to go back with Catherine and make sure that he watches everything. The show started, Robert Downey Jr. was there, but here was the biggest surprise. Michael J. Fox, who we know has been battling Parkinson's for years, was wheeled out onto the stage in a wheelchair, stood up, gave his speech, got a standing ovation. This man is a lesson in courage. And I love the fact that his wife has just been by him the whole time. Once it was over, William went backstage. Here he is meeting Savannah Leaf, Shirley O'Connor, and Miss Rorden. I love the uh, red dress that young lady's wearing, but he, he went to go backstage and he got to meet them. Here he is meeting one of the producers, one of the directors. And for those of you that are interested, there's actually a website you can go to that lists all the categories and the winners. So I'm going to say to you now, please forgive me if I don't say these names right. Here is William meeting Phoebe Dynever, Io Edebiri, Sophie Wilde, and Mia McKenna. It's pretty obvious that something funny was being said, and this picture was snapped. And you see the girl on the right, I think it's the one in the black with the outfit. Well, of course, Newsweek, sugar number two, Jack Royston put out an article slamming uh, William and pointing to this picture. And what Jack is insinuating is that whatever he said, it wasn't funny. And somebody else said, oh, look, the face everyone makes when he randomly admits he dated a black girl once. Get it? I mean, they're, they're, of course, something's wrong. You guys get where I'm going with this. Of course, Jack Royston comes up with this crap. How that man is still employed by Newsweek, I don't know. So to show you what a D-bag he is, here's the actual video footage of what was said. Here you go. Yikes, moving on. 
And of course, the Mirror pointed out that the real reason Harry and Meghan will never attend the BAFTAs and they've snubbed it for the second year running, um, I'm sorry, you can't snub something that you were not invited to. They have not been invited to the BAFTAs. That's why they weren't there. Oh, all I want to say is I missed Catherine, the glamour, the glitz, but you know what? She'll be back next year, you guys, so don't worry about it. All right, let's move on, but sticking with William. Now, this is the next project. William put out a statement. He's going to spend three million pounds to build homes in a Cornish surf town. There'll be 24 houses. They should be ready by the year 2025. And there's gonna be a mix of four bedrooms and you know one bedroom flats. And the thought behind it is if this does well, then it could further projects on 130,000 acres of land that he owns as the Duke of Cornwall. It's being reported that the homes are going to be built in the traditional Cornish style, which apparently is what you're looking at. Now, because William is all about the environment like his father is, uh, they're saying that the homes are going to be low carbon. The roofs are gonna be made of slate. There's gonna be solar panels, heat pumps for you know heating and air conditioning, uh, granite lintels, and they want the area to have shrubs and flowers planted around it to help encourage biodiversity. Now, I think that's pretty cool. William is going to supply the land for free, and he's going to cover all the costs for the construction as well, which I think is extremely generous. Everybody's like, he's got so much money, but he doesn't have to spend it this way, but he is. So let's not forget that when he was 13, he told Princess Diana, and I'm quoting, if I become king, I will let the homeless live in our palaces. So he's now become patron of the charity Center Point, which we know Diana used to be the patron of. He spoke at the affordable housing development of 33 flats for young people funded by the group in 2022. And he's not given up on working to end homelessness. Now, William is working on that project in Cornwall with a homeless charity called St. Petrox because those that are in temporary housing, he's hoping to get into permanent housing. And they're also going to be offering something called wraparound services. I've never heard of that, like mental health support. Love it. Go, William! All right, now I've shown this the other day. We're covering this again because remember, Harry vowed never to ski again since the death of his mother. And one of my subscribers said, that's rubbish. Charles took them skiing all the time. Well, it's at this point that another one of my subscribers said that Harry was skiing with his father and his brother when the Queen Mother died. And he lied in his book where he was, but he was actually on a ski trip which I do believe is correct. And then of course, I showed pictures last time and everybody said, look how young Harry was. That was when his mother died. Okay, well, here's pictures of him. He's obviously older than 12, skiing with his dad. So once again, he's been caught in yet another, well, let's not call it a lie. Let's just call it misinformation. All right, you guys, that is the end of part one of the dress and the mess. Let's move on now to part two. Let's go.